Alright, welcome back, everyone, to another Draft Premier League Season 7 Captains interview. We are joined by the captains of the Infernal Armory, King L5 and Aster J. Please introduce yourselves. I guess I'll go first. Hello, I am Mr. The King L5, uh, Clash of Kings champion, DPL two time champion, and MVP. Oh my god. What can't this guy do? I don't know. Well, that's me. I run the tour as well. Oh, so, yeah. What's up, guys? It's it's Aster, Aster. here. And uh, you guys know me as the uh, the clutch the clutch man from last season. If you don't know, then uh, what are you doing? Go and watch last season's last game. I won it all for us. And uh, this year, I'm uh, I'm captaining with uh, with partner L5. Uh, I also have a championship under my belt, obviously from last season. And uh, this is my first time captaining. Brilliant. Sound like a powerful duo. Um, but yeah, harping off of those um, achievements you stated. Um, so obviously you both have won a DPL championship in the past. Um, you're both former MVPs. Um, and obviously L5, you've captained numerous teams um, to multiple championships. And an Aster, of course, said it's your first time um, being a captain. So obviously you kind of know what to expect going into a season, but are there any like new goals or uh, expectations that you have for your for this specific team um, this season? Obviously we haven't gone through an auction yet, but um, do you have any like preliminary goals that you've set for yourself going into the season? L5, you've been uh, around these parts before, so I'll let you go first. All right, so my expectations are, I just want to make playoffs realistically because what if you're in the top four right they all pretty much have a similar shot at winning the championship so as long as you can stay at like a solid differential four and three or five and two um then you've kind of like got your foot through the door and you can really aim for that championship other than that i think the regular season is not too important but then the champion like the playoffs you want to win the championship you really got to turn up and give it your all at that time so i want to make playoffs and then i want to have a strong performance in the playoffs um regardless of what seed we are so i want to kind of counter that uh and say um yeah if you make it into the uh, the top four if you make it into playoffs everybody has an equal shot of winning except for first seed of course as we know uh, yeah. so uh <laughs> that's uh that's definitely something we want to accomplish uh i would like to finish the season on at least a uh five and two record if not uh, six and one uh i know we can do that well considering the caliber of players that we are as captains obviously we, we bought into both play in slots every week so we're uh we're double cap core and uh but realistically yeah i i think expectations for me personally i want to grow as as a captain as a player uh never done it before so that's that's something that uh i want to set as an expectation for myself i want to better myself as as somebody who can lead and for the team as a whole uh, i think we should be making finals if i'm being honest uh maybe championship is is not a realistic expectation but it's definitely obviously what we're shooting for so that's that's always the case yeah, if I'm on, uh, uh, yeah, you can get it. <laughs> Obviously, we want to get the championship. I, I would be happy with a finals appearance, you know. Um, but yeah, for me, really aiming for the playoffs. Uh, if we can get the higher seed, then that's obviously a bigger advantage this season than in previous seasons because of the way that playoff uh, tier selection works. Um, so the way that it actually works is the higher seed gets to choose the format not to play. And then everything else is doubled up to get an 8v8. So mm. that's a pretty large advantage, bigger than previous seasons. So maybe the first seed maybe has a little bit of an advantage. Yep. And I think our, our, our team our team as a whole has an advantage because we have the person who makes the rules as one of our captains. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I actually <laughs> know them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think... Every time L5 has made the playoffs in DPL, he has basically won 
the championship. Correct. And then I've never lost the playoffs. Uh, yeah. And then that's uh, good news. And then good Aster, news. his two seasons in the DPL, he's made finals both times. So. Yep. Um. So what I'm hearing is this captain core. If they make the playoffs, they're making finals Danger. and going all the way. Yep. yep. That's that's the idea. Yep. The plan. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess uh, transitioning, you mentioned the, the playoff format being a little bit different this season, and that's because the regular season's format has also been changed to a, um, where you play one of every tier, um, four tiers, Scarlet Violet, um, Sword and Shield, Ultra Sun and Moon, and Oras, um, except we also play an extra tier in Scarlet and Violet, and then each team will choose um, um, an extra tier on top of that. Um, what are your thoughts on like this new format change? And uh, since L five, you did um, help. You know, you were you basically came up with it or uh, factored it into the season. Like, what were your thoughts on it? And, like, why you ultimately ended up, you know, deciding on having this type of format? So we had a few options here. We could either get rid of Oras and go three two two, or we could keep Oras and go for either this or we could do an even number of games um, at two each and then it every week would potentially be a tie break or like end up in ties you wouldn't run a tie break you would get like half a point that's kind of how SPL does it they have mm. an even number of games so the ties are possible but I figured we would rather have seven games and this allows a more flexible draft to flourish which is something that we want to encourage, obviously. And so, let's see how, what am I trying to say here? I like that you can pick into your own strength or you can pick into your opponent's weakness, whichever, whichever you feel is more beneficial to you. So there's a little bit more strategy into the weekly selection of your lineup. You know, you can really scout ahead. And that's another thing. This season, we're having Mondays pretty much off because the first half of the Monday is to pick your tier and the second half of Monday is to select your lineup. Games are due on Sunday. So you really have time to scout your opponents, scout all the matchups and see what tier you match up great into them and maybe which ones you don't. So it's a little bit more dynamic in that way. As an extension really to that, it. so I think that it's almost a necessary evil. I wouldn't necessarily say an evil but the the format that we're using for the regular season is uh kind of complements having double captain uh plays every week because it also means that your auction who you select as players is going to be extremely important because you're going to reinforce certain formats uh, better than others and that means you're going to be pl choosing your game most likely in those formats maybe not consequentially to the teams that you end up drafting but the players themselves so for example if we get three strong players in sv we're going to be playing an extra player in sv and because we have smaller budgets because we have two captains playing every week uh, that matters even more and I think that that's, uh, I, I like the format. Uh, I think it's really cool. I think it gives uh, teams the ability to, to, to pick into their strengths, as L5 mentioned. And uh, it's gonna be really interesting how, how that plays out. Yeah, it should be a very interesting change. I'm excited to see how captains, you know, adapt to it during the auction. And then obviously during the season, I feel like for the most part, based on like the team roster and then, um, Maybe, maybe dependent on like what drafts are stronger and what tier, but there's like a fair, I think there's a lot less drafts um, in comparison to like other seasons, given the amount of tiers we're playing. I think it's like what? Nine. Well, there's nine in last season, there were 10, right? Yeah, but we have an extra tier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, it should be interesting. I'm excited for it. Um, and then I guess another change we did was um, for Scarlet and Violet. So, Last gen in Sword and Shield, we never integrated the new mechanic of Dynamax because it was just too difficult to, um, you know, make it balanced and then not run into issues with like bad complex bands or like gimmicks with like holding Pokeballs sure, or yeah. anything. 
Um, yeah, only Pokemon two points and below can Dynamax. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this season we are using the uh, the uh, the new uh, mechanic that was introduced, terrestrialization. Um, and I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on your perspective on Terra. Is it like balanced? Is there a way to keep it balanced? And obviously, um, we have a a new rule set. Um, with terrestrialization based on how you know many leagues were um, integrating it at the beginning of the generation um, where uh, now you can see all of the Terra types of each Pokemon at Team Preview. So uh, yeah, I just want to get your thoughts on, on that and I guess since L5 is also here, um, how you ultimately you know, thought of this and then decided to um, on this rule set. So I'll go first actually here. Um, L5 sent me an essay on discord uh <laughs> with, like blocks of text explaining why we uh opted for two terror users instead of one uh and really it makes sense as well as revealing them at team preview um i compared it to uh to how draft and showdown are sort of directly opposed whereas showdown you have a format where you have a bunch of pokemon you know what their sets are going to be when you run into them most of the time anyway on the ladder whereas draft you know what you're going to be playing against a specific subset of mons but you don't know what the sets are going to be so there's a direct dichotomy there and the terror rules kind of apply the same way between showdown and um and what we're doing here in dpl it's this i don't know what you're bringing but i know what they're likely to be versus i know what you're bringing but i don't know what they are so um i i really like it and i think one teramon really uh limits um diversity and the ability to to how you choose to play the the game as it plays out whereas if you're only ever bringing one teramon uh, you're, you're kind of just locked into that play. You can only make that play during the game, but if you have two Terramons, now suddenly you have uh, the ability to to change up uh, how you uh, sequence your your plays, uh, how the, the game actually plays out. And I think it's, uh, I think it's a lot better um, than having one Terra. I don't know if it's necessarily better than other League's restrictions. Like I know LD, we have... Um, the 25 point system where it's between two pokemon they have to total 25 points i think that's a little bit too limiting with how our draft works uh for for us anyway for for dpl for team tours in general but i really like what was done here and i do want to hear l5's thoughts on uh why we opted for a little bit more in depth on this this style and this um this restriction this this rule set for terrestrialization yeah, sure. I can go a little bit more into detail. So for Terra, right? Obviously, you can't just allow completely unrestricted Terra across the board. That's way too much uh, variety and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just unexpectedness, I guess. Yeah. And you can't really call that a competitive format, in my opinion, especially for draft when anything can be pretty much anything. So. I really enjoy having multiple Terra Pokemon for the reason that um, opportunity cost is such a core mechanic of terrestrialization. Like for example, on the ladder, right? If I want to Terra my, let's say, Annihilate, okay, it's banned, but you know, that's the example I'm going for. If I Terra yeah. my Annihilate, then I'm no longer able to Terra my D Knight later in the game. So, by making my Annihilate a bigger threat, I am now lessening the threat of my D-Knight later in the game. So there's a big trade-off there. Whereas if I were to stay normal on my Annihilate, then my D-Knight later in the game could do the Terra Normal E-Speed and be a much bigger threat late game. So that's kind of like... That's one of the biggest uh, skill expressions of terrestrialization, in my opinion, is knowing when to click it and knowing which Pokemon to use it on. So there's like... Op opportunities where Pokemon can get an adaptability boost offensively. And if there's only one Terramon, you kind of just click that brainlessly and that you call it that uh, there's nothing to think about. But if you have, say, Terra Chiyu with fire, but you also have Terra Scizor with water, for example, you might want to save your Terra for that Scizor so you can SD on a fire type move, resist it and get your plus two and maybe potentially sweep late game. 
but if you didn't have that option, you're just clicking the fire every time on your Chiyu. And likewise, yeah. you might be willing to get rid of that opportunity to SD later if your Chiyu is in a position to just claim a kill with overheat, but only if you Terra. So it's like, it, it gives people more options, but also revealing it on team preview, your opponent knows what those options are as well. So it allows for much better counterplay. Uh, one of the biggest things that I did not want to happen in DPL was the very common end game of GG, I guess the Terra type wrong. We see that all the time in LD, DGBA, uh, all of the places that I've seen games, honestly. You just mm -hmm. guess the Terra type wrong and then you lose. Now, a lot of that is due to some of the Pokemon being allowed, being really overpowered with Terra, which is why in DPL we've banned a lot of the overpowered Terra Pokemon. Like, for example, Palafin is out of here, Roaring Moon is not there, um, Dragonite. Reggie Lucky, Dragonite for sure is Turbo, Turbo Gun. <laughs> Spectre as well. Spectre, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all those Pokemon, I didn't feel like. It was overall beneficial to the tier to allow them with uh, with like no Terra restrictions. Like a lot of leagues do that, but I feel like in eight eight team drafts, you really don't need that many powerful Pokemon. Like I was looking at several leagues where you have Garchomp as your third best Pokemon on the roster. And that's like so much power. I feel like we would prefer to rein that in a little bit. So that's kind of why I went for the tiering decisions that I did go with. And obviously it's not just me, but I will say I was probably the biggest driving force behind that. Um, so yeah, we did a lot of testing internally on how good Pokemon are and how does the Terra preview feel when you're playing. And it did not feel overpowered, did not feel unfair, but it did feel dynamic and you can definitely make plays around it. You can bluff things, which is really cool. You can pretend you're going to go for the Terra and then save it for later. Um, because your opponent knows what you have. Um, it just creates more uh, cool dynamics in that. So that's kind of like my whole thoughts behind SV, how we arrived at the DPL format. It sounds like a very um like like you said very dynamic tier i'm actually I, I was very hesitant when it was first brought up um you know the the team preview Terra. but then the more i thought about it um and the more you explained it to me i was like yeah actually this makes a lot more sense i feel like um you're not just gonna like you said you're not just gonna auto lose an end game because you aha uh -huh, you predict you didn't predict the right you know uncommon Terra type that they ended up bringing. Um, exactly. And so I, I do I do like that. I like the bluffing element as well, where like, say for example, your your Water Scizor um, example, you bring it in on like a Chiyu that's locked into like Flamethrower, um, you can force it out um, and Scizor can, you know, SD in front of it or it can double out, force a, force a switch out or something. But I, I do like that um, dynamic element yeah. of it. I can bring up two specific examples that actually happened in internal testing. Okay, so I was playing against Blue, and he had a Baxcalibur. Now, in prep for Baxcalibur, I brought a bunch of fighting coverage, right, on a few of my mons, so that it wouldn't set up for free. But in the game, it was revealed that he was Terra Ghost on preview. So I knew that I could not rely on my fighting coverage versus it. So I had to preserve my other ways of dealing it above all else because I knew that uh, I didn't have that much counterplay because I brought fighting coverage versus a Terra Ghost guy. So knowing that, I was able to preserve the Pokemon that could deal with Ghost of Excalibur and not auto-lose because I didn't know that it was Ghost, which definitely would have happened if I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And then the other example is I did have a Water Scizor versus an Iron Moth. Now, Iron Moth was Specs Overheat, and my team didn't have much to guard against it, so I knew that Iron Moth was very valuable. So after an overheat to claim a Pokemon, I sent out my Scizor. He knew it was Terra Water, so he predicted me to Terra my Scizor, obviously, so he switched to Zarude. 
But what I did is I just SD'd hard. And I did not Terra because I knew he would be forced to switch out because the Iron Moth was so valuable in that game. My SD was able to U-turn on the Zarud next turn, knock it out, and then later in the game, I was able to Terra my Scizor and win the end game that way. Did you not tearing happen to uh, come into play? Like, did the, the steel bug typing come back up later? I don't remember, but okay. what it did allow me to do was stay in on Zarud the next turn. Which right, was yeah, because then really he, important. He can't, yeah, you can't power whip. Right. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But yeah, just little things like that. You can do some pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I really like it. I think it's... Uh... It's cool. At least, at least it's it's pretty uh, grounded. It's a it's pretty down to earth. Like there's nothing crazy about it, and it's it's the first season going into using the rule set, uh, and it's the first season having this format. Obviously, so if adjustments need to be made, we can make them. But I think we've already started off on a pretty good foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this tier definitely has a lot of skill expression in both play and prep. Yeah, so that's really cool to me as well. Now I wonder how prep will change um, as the season develops because you know people are going to get accustomed to prepping for this style um, with like the two tear on preview, like how they're going to prepare for it, you know, in prep. And then in some cases, you probably can't prep for everything. You'll probably just have to create sequences or sequences. Um, learn how to position your your mods a matchup very well so you can avoid um you know certain types that way but yeah it should be it yeah. should be a fun time um but i guess moving on to i guess more auction related questions but um are there any returning players from previous seasons that have signed up that you expect to kind of have a drop in performance um, this season and it could be like a captain it could be a player um, that signed up as well oh, fine. Um, I'll, let, yeah. I'll let you go first because uh, you've uh, you've been around the block you know which players go up and down so I'll give my thoughts after and I really don't like uh, <laughs> throwing right? people under the bus like this yeah it sucks especially when you might be picking them up and it doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be because of like you know skill or anything or like it could be the type of tier that they're playing it could be the prep support that they're getting on a certain team team environment um i think there's there's also like um i, I, bl I blanked on it but yeah you you can you can talk about it as well yeah okay well something i've heard from other interviews is street cred cookie he went six <laughs> one last same. season and uh, I actually teamed with him in Clash of Kings, and he also popped off there. Mm. So I think he went, what, five and two or something? Did he get as many things going his way there, too? Yes, he was extremely mm. lucky there. Oh, there you go, yeah. And Eventually so, that's going to run out. It's got to, right? He, surely, right? Now, I don't, I don't mean this disrespectfully or anything, but he's definitely been getting more than his fair share of luckiness. So... I think six yeah. and one was really great for him last season. I doubt it's going to happen again, although I don't think he's going to drop off too much, you know? I still really respect him as a player. The mm -hmm. one player that's sort of 50-50 for me is I, actually. Um, seen his performance over the last couple of months hasn't looked too great. Uh, he is captaining with Rai this season, and uh, I don't know, it, 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 he could just be sandbagging everywhere else and saving it for here but uh and obviously he's gonna be playing different formats um in AKA dpl that he has moon. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah he's definitely gonna be playing awesome um and uh and i have a massive respect for i as a player he's 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 an amazing player i consider him top five in the format uh and i i, I don't know what's going on right now with him but if it carries over into dpl that's one person that i could see dr drop off a little bit other than that, I don't really, I can't, I can't think of anybody, and I'm definitely not dipping into the player pool, and, and <laughs> saying who's dropped off and who hasn't. Yeah, exactly. I want to keep, uh, I want to keep as many bridges unburned as possible. <laughs> uh, 
No, we, we're, we're here I for mean, the I content. Say, I will <laughs> say, Spex King is not going undefeated again. He went 3 0 last season. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> bold, bold. All right. <laughs> But yeah, and then um, continuing with, I guess, the auction theme. Um, generally, you don't have to say anything specific about like, your plans or anything, but how confident are you going into this particular auction? Obviously, um, it's slightly different with you buying a second Captain Core, you have 25k less budget than a couple other teams. Um, how is that influencing your preparation? Um, and what type of like advantage, disadvantage uh, relationship do you think it uh, offers captains going into the auction? I'm personally a little bit um, terrified because obviously it's my first auction ever, but I, I have somebody with a lot of experience at the helm here um, by my side. So, and, and we're doing a lot of work behind the scenes to, to make sure that we're as prepared as possible for Sunday. Uh, and yeah, we'll, uh, I'm, I like I said, I am a little bit scared, but uh, but I think I'll, once in the moment, as with many other things, I uh, I'll be ready for it. Yeah, you'll get that a little adrenaline rush at the beginning, and then you'll kind of settle down after you get like a yeah. player or two. Exactly. Yeah. What What about you, uh, L five? So how are we approaching the auction? Uh, well, I guess how like, confident are you going in? Yeah, how and confident? then. And I guess like maybe if your preparation's a little bit different with the new, um, like the budget change. Um. Mm -hmm. So Aster has kind of taken over a lot of the preparation side of things, whereas I'm just kind of giving suggestions on what players we want to keep an eye on. Um, and honestly, it's pretty similar to what I've done for previous seasons. We have our like, we have our like priorities, you know, and stuff like that. And so mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the better ways to plan your auction. So I'm feeling pretty confident that we can get a roster that we're happy with and that can perform well. Yeah, I think so too. I have pretty good experience drafting people. Um, I've been a captain in like, what, seven tours, seven seasons of team tours so far, something like that. You have yeah. no idea how reassuring that is. <laughs> yeah. So of know what's up um i know the common pitfalls that people tend to fall for so we'll try mm -hmm. to induce those as much as possible on our opponents and uh, yep. smart you know you know and i've uh, i've had a uh, former captains as well helping me behind the scenes giving me some pointers i won't say who but uh you, want you me to say who <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean go for it Nah, it's all good. <laughs> it's cool. Um, yeah, I've, we've we've had help from uh, from a few places as well. Um, so it's uh, Zeno. He's shadow captaining this season. Yeah, totally. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Why are teams blue? <laughs> um, yeah. No. Uh, I think. Uh, I think, like you said, the adrenaline adrenaline rush at the at the beginning is going to be uh, most of the the nerves. Uh, I think that's that's going to be it, and then we'll really settle in. And uh, I think I think we've got a good plan going in. I think we know exactly what we want from the auction, and uh, we're we're hoping to get I would say like ninety percent of it. So sounds good. Sounds good. Um, and then I guess speaking of captaining, um, L five, you've had like you said seven captaining. Um, or seven tours that you've captained, captained before. Um, so you have a lot of experience under your, yeah. under your belt. And an Aster, of course, it's your first time, but um, I guess in a way, um, how would you describe your style of captaining or um, your would-be style of captaining um, in one word? In one word, mine's persistent. I, I can believe that, yes. Based off last yeah. season. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I can only think of two word phrases. This is tough. Just um, put a dash. It's one word. I actually have I'll a good one for all five. Encouraging. Mm, okay. I was going to go with wise for you. Wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wise sage. I like, 
Yeah, I like to make sure my players are having a good time and that they want to help each other prep. You know, people want to go into mocks and they want to perform for the team. Really encouraging a positive team culture is something that I've really stressed in the past few seasons that I've captained, and it's made it a lot more enjoyable. Then, of course, when I'm not washed, you know, it's off and on for me sometimes. Um, we can get that winning mentality and we can just keep the ball rolling. Like in Clash, we got the first seed, we steamrolled the playoffs, you know. That was yeah. awesome because, uh, you know, me and Money kind of like carried throughout the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of kept that ball rolling through the whole thing. That was really great. Then on Tengang, uh, for example, uh, that's when I had my strongest performance out of any team tour. And I was kind of like the third captain in that team really like helping um, develop talent within the team. Um, you'll see uh, a lot of the players from Tengang Season 4, they turned into top players, but they weren't like that at the beginning of Season 4, right? So, um, like really nurturing the players, helping them grow, giving them a positive trajectory, you know, so they can keep improving throughout the season, and then we end up with a really strong roster, you know, overall. And that's something yeah, and that I really enjoy doing. And we're kind of hoping to do something similar here. Um, yes. Obviously, due that due to the restricted budget, you know, you got you got to work with what you have, and yeah. uh, and that's that's what we're going to do. And I think between my persistence and L 5s encouragement, we can get that done. Yeah, I liked a lot with uh, with what you said there, um, like encouraging players. Obviously, you want it to be, you know, like helping your teammates. Something you want to encourage rather than. You know, ultimately coming down to like an obligation it feels like a job for them, or um, like they're not going to get playing time if they don't help out the team type of thing. Um, yeah. Uh, and then also at the end there, um, where you said like, basically, what's the word? You're 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 developing um, kind of the players on your team, and they find success outside of your team in future seasons. I kind of like that idea of like you know. Um, developing players and improving the player pool um, as a result um, and then those players can go on and you know what they've learned they can apply and teach to their teammates and all that I, I just feel like that's a, that's a that's a great way to improve not only the competitiveness of the league but um, the depth of the player pool moving forward yeah I mean you and Rai taught me a lot and that's probably a big part of the the, the reason that I'm here in this interview right now so I appreciate that. It's <laughs> a pretty good example, yeah. Yeah, just a quick apology to Sean. I'm pretty sure we only captained in seasons where I was kind of like less motivated or whatever, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I think I was with you on Crusaders season three, but we don't talk about yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> that was not a good look. <laughs> and then season five, I like, yeah. You were you were very busy. Um, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't I really follow really you. really busy yeah. during season five. Yeah. I'm still looking forward to the, was it the, the, the food truck idea? Yeah, me too. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, I guess a little transition now to if you want to leave any strong messages towards any other captain cores, um, is there any specific cores that you like? want to play and basically show them up um, during the mm -hmm. season? And then is there any messages you want to send them now in this interview? Yeah, I've got two myself. Um, well, I and Rai, obviously, I want a really good series between us. Uh, that's my message for them. I want us to be as competitive as possible. I think that's going to be one of the better matchups this season. And um, to, the, uh, to the team that talks the most, <laughs> Toxic Invest. They had a lot to say in their interview. They they, they, they got their chests buffed out, but uh, I don't know. I, I look at their combined records from last season, and they averaged to like a three and four record. So I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know how the season is going to go for them, but uh, hopefully they can turn it around because otherwise it's going to be another disaster. Yeah, I kind of have the same two. Uh, I also would like to play Cake Takers. Um, they have some of like the older players that have been around for like what seven years now or something. They're a techno and genius. And me also being kind of one of the like back in the day players, 
Uh, that'll be a cool game. Uh, the family, obviously, I want to play them because we're the top two logos. Got to see who's <laughs> the best there. The clash of the logos, yeah. <laughs> and then oh. Vess, you know, <laughs> it, it'll be funny. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. That, that's all we'll say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope in like the war rooms or like the general chat, people become a little more outspoken, talk some, talk some smack, give, give mm, the fans a little bit know, of gotta, uh, content. Gotta bring that to the general chat. Yeah, guy. straight to the general. Exactly. Yeah, that's where all of it happens. <laughs> there was a little bit of that the other day after the after the first interview. Yeah, <laughs> people are already getting into it. But yeah, that should be should be a good time. Um, and I, I can see your your reasoning for wanting to play with a family specifically. Um, I know that core. The reason they joined together is they're you know they were two captains of the past two DPL champions, uh, Toe in season yeah. five, and then obviously Wings last season. Um, but yeah, um, and I guess again I, I added this one on the fly in like the first interview, so I'm just gonna keep asking it. Um, Based solely on these captain cores, because obviously we don't have any of the rosters because the auction hasn't happened yet. And based on their prior experiences, success, whatnot, failures, um, what four teams do you predict to make the playoffs? So this is actually going to be a, a little bit counterintuitive to the things I've said earlier. But uh, for one, obviously the family, even though I said I think I might have a drop off, I think they're still going to be able to make a strong enough team and they've got good enough captaining experience between the two of them to make playoffs. So definitely the family and uh, ourselves. I think we're definitely making playoffs. And the other two teams, I think, would be uh, Learn to Play and Royal Conquerors. Unfortunately, I have to say it, but I think they will make playoffs this go around. All right. So I think similarly that us and the family are making playoffs. Uh, I think us two are the strongest captain cores, uh, just at face value. And then I want to say learn to play is also making it. And then. I kind of want to drop a hot take here and say that Great Tusks of Terror is mm. going to slide into the fourth seed. Ian and Hacker, I mean, considering yeah. they only have one captain slot, so they have an, a, an increased budget and they've got two pretty solid captains, it's, it's going to come down to, to how they build their team, really. Yeah, we've seen Ian have success captaining before in the past, if yeah. I remember correctly, so I feel like they had definitely have a shot. I believe Ian has made playoffs every time he has been a captain. Yeah. Mm. So it's a it's a good trend all, for them to have. Well, you know, there are only two teams whose who both captains have championships, and it's ourselves and the family. So if that you discount true. us at any point, that's that's just it's blasphemy, really. Foolish, some yes. some would say. <laughs> But yeah, that last slot really could be anything. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of the other teams could drop the spaghetti, you know? Yeah, obviously we'll, we won't know until we see the entire roster um, completed. Yeah, and even then, we've seen some teams drop you know, some stinkers. To perform. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we've seen some uh, overachievers as well. So it's always exciting. Sure. I, I like that DPL continues to not have, you know, a high level of predictability. Um, I think the only season I, I can remember that was like super predictable was like season five, maybe. But yeah, um, I think that's all I have for you guys, unless you guys want to say any last words to or discuss anything further, I guess. But. Um, for the most part, that's no, all the questions really. I, I have. I want to give a shout out to Obi for the awesome logo. Uh, I think he did a, a fantastic job on our logo. He, he did exactly what I wanted. Technically, I wanted Armor Rouge and, and Sarah Ledge reversed. Uh, but, I mean, it, it looks incredible with a few adjustments that we made on the fly. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it, looks, it looks so cool. I'm so happy with it. I've, I've had mono good logos 
in DPL. I'm very happy about that. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the only shout out I, I wanted to give, really. Yeah, big shout outs to Obi for all the lo all of the logos that he made, and Vino as well for the couple logos he he ended up making as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I appreciate you guys coming on for this interview. It was a fun time. Love hearing all your thoughts and Thanks especially the more in-depth analysis on the you know format itself, the terror rules, and all of that. Um, yeah, that, that was a good perspective for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you guys go down to the description, make sure to join the DPL server. Applications are live until February fourth, um, until five PM PST. And then the auction will be 24 hours after that on Sunday. Um, make sure to catch it live because those are always very fun to watch live, um, especially with all of your friends. But yeah, uh, thank you, Aster and uh, L5 for joining joining me today. And we'll see you in the next interview. Peace. It was a pleasure. See you guys. <laughs>